Hello everybody, Captain Cody here from GlobalFishingReports.com. Today we're going to be talking about bear safety. More specifically, firearms versus bear spray versus bear bells. Which one of these three things will keep you most safe while hiking in bear country? We're going to look at research studies that actually compare the safety rates between firearms, pistols, and long rifles versus bear spray versus bear bells and making noise. I'm on my way to shoot our bear safety video. And guess where we're going? We're gonna do it on Bear Mountain. All right guys, we're hiking along in bear country and we just encountered some bear poop. Now how do we tell this is brown bear poop or black bear poop? We can tell it's got a lot of berries. Oh man, in this case, it's got bear bells in it. That means it's brown bear poop. That's a joke. All right guys, in that report that I was talking about, they compiled data for over a hundred years of firearm incidences where a firearm was used against an aggressive bear in Alaska. And that report showed that long rifles were 76% effective at stopping a bear. Long rifles are shotguns and rifles. That same report showed that handguns were 84% effective at stopping bears. And this is for stopping aggressive bear behavior. The other report written by the same lead author, Tom Smith, looked at over 30 years of incidences involving both brown bears and black bears, and that showed that bear spray stopped undesirable bear behavior 92% of the time. So everybody always says bear spray is more effective than firearms. Well, it kind of determines the terminology and how they're saying it, but they're very comparable. And in reality, you're gonna wanna carry both. What do you call a bear with no teeth? A gummy bear. No, not this type of gummy bears. You know, it only has gums, no teeth. A gummy bear. Personally guys, I carry an 870 Express tactical shotgun. It holds six plus one, so I have seven rounds. It's a pump action shotgun. It's super reliable. I grew up using an 870, so I'm very proficient with it. I feel confident in it. I feel much more comfortable having this than a pistol. I like having both a shotgun and bear spray because they're both effective against bears and you always have that non-lethal option. Personally, I carry buckshot in my shotgun. I was actually trying to find some slugs, but the only slugs that I found were jacketed slugs. And I did some reading online and jacketed slugs in a smooth bore shotgun that's not rifled can actually cause overpressurization issues. So I didn't feel comfortable using a jacketed slug. All right, guys, let's talk about how to use bear spray. First, the most important thing is always keep your bear spray somewhere that is accessible. The best place is on a belt right here on your hand so you always know where it is. If you need to use it, pull it out. There's a safety cap on it. You gotta remove the safety cap. This won't spray if the safety cap's on. To remove the safety cap, all you gotta do is slide it off. Sometimes there's a zip tie here which can make it difficult to get this off. Make sure you cut the zip tie. Now whenever you spray bear spray, there's about six seconds of total spray time in this can in particular. Always check how much spray time your can particularly has, which means you wanna spray it in two second bursts. Hold it with two hands, spray a little bit below the bear's face, and hold for two seconds, hold for two seconds. Obviously if the bear is charging you and you think it's gonna get there, empty the whole can right at his face. It's good to have two cans, one accessible, one in your backpack. Another thing when you're using bear spray, guys, is you gotta take wind into account, and if it's raining heavy. If the wind's coming at you and you're spraying it, be prepared that that bear spray is gonna be coming back at you and it's gonna be stinging your eyes, you know, more intensely than pepper spray even would. If the bear's coming towards you, you can start to spray it a little bit ahead of time so the bear comes into that fog and is deterred, but don't spray too early, because then you waste your whole can and you never hit the bear at all. All right, talking a little more about bear spray. Bear spray is not like bug spray where you spray yourself with it and you spray your belongings with it and it's gonna deter the bears. Spraying bear spray can actually make bears curious and come over and try and figure out what's going on. 
So you don't spray this on your stuff. You spray it directly in the face of a bear whenever you have a close encounter with an aggressive bear. So this is our bear spray, Frontiersman Bear Attack Deterrent. Make sure you read it and make sure that it says bear attack deterrent and isn't just regular pepper spray. The other thing you want to check is the expiration date. This one expires 02 of 2021. So right now it's 2019, I know that I'm all right. This particular one has a glow in the dark cap, which could be nice to find your bear spray at night. And guys, this safety cap, if you do take it off, it does slide right back on. And once you have it slid back on, it won't go off. All right guys, so this is a bear bell. As you can hear, it rattles. It's made by Frontiersman. This is the one I have. And on the bottom here, it's got a silencer. So if that connects, now it doesn't make any noise. So you can silence it if you want, typically. And then this silencer's got Velcro on this side. It's got Velcro on this side. So you can hook it like this. Typically, I'll just hook it to something like this while I'm hiking. A lot of times people have these on their dogs. And just as you're walking, it does make noise. All noise can help. A lot of people in the study say, oh, bear bells don't help. An audible voice is better. An audio voice may be better, but this is better than nothing. So bear bells are a good idea. It's not a foolproof plan, but it helps. I would say by far the most important thing to do whenever you're hiking in bear country is to make noise. Make noise audibly. Coming through bears, coming through. Just repeat that phrase over and over again as you're hiking. You can sing songs. You can talk with a group of people. Anything you're doing, as long as you're constantly making noise, that's what you want to do. Coming through bears, coming through. Coming through bears, coming through. Walking quietly, walking with soft feet like you're hunting, that's, the bad, that's a bad idea. That's the worst thing you can do. But whenever you are hunting, you have to be quiet. So whenever you're hunting, the best thing to do is to walk into open spaces. Open spaces where you can see far ahead of you. So you can see if there's a bear, a bear can see you, and that avoids getting too close to a bear unwantedly. All right, guys, because we are talking about using firearms for bear protection, I did want to go over the basic safety rules of a firearm. The two most important safety rules of a firearm is always keep your gun pointed in a safe direction. That means never point the muzzle or cross your muzzle against anything you don't plan to shoot. Safety rule number two is treat every gun as if it's loaded. That means even if you know your gun's unloaded, treat it as if it's loaded. Obviously, keep your safety on while you're hiking in the woods. So we're talking about bear safety, we're talking about firearms and carrying bear spray and going hiking in the woods and camping in the woods. And the truth is, there's only three fatal bear attacks in North America on average every year. Heart disease kills 600,000 people per year. So that means going to your favorite fast food restaurant, getting a burger, fries, and a soft drink is 200,000 times more likely to kill you than going on a camping trip or going hiking in the woods. That means you're 20 million percent more likely to die of a heart attack than you are a bear attack. So what I'm saying guys, if you're planning on going hiking, or you're planning on going camping, and you were worried about bears, don't be worried about bears. What do you call a freezing bear? A burr. Just because there's only three fatal bear attacks in North America every year, doesn't mean that you shouldn't take bears seriously. Just in Anchorage in 2016, 34 built bears were killed. 17 of them were killed by civilians that were protecting themselves or protecting their property, and another 17 bears were killed by state police or wildlife officials in the state of Alaska. And that's just in Anchorage. So if you look at the whole country, there are a lot of instances where bears are shot and killed to stop aggressive behavior. And unfortunately, a lot of these bears are killed at the fault of humans. Humans leave food around, which then brings bears into the same area that humans reside, and they don't wanna leave because they're being fed. One reason I really wanted to make this video is because last year I was hiking in Juneau, Alaska. I was doing a nine hour hike. I was on my way back down. I was about eight hours into it, and I'm just walking back, and I'm really tired, and I'm walking quiet. And I came across the bear about 30 feet away from me, and it just looks at me. And I actually didn't have a backpack. I had nothing with me at all, and this bear is just looking at me. It's not running away. 
And it was a pretty scary experience. And I really wish that I had bear spray or that I had a firearm or I had been making more noise to scare this bear away. And I actually just slowly backed up. And once I was out of sight, I left the area. That's actually the most important thing. Whenever you encounter a bear, don't panic, don't run away. Because if you run away, the bear's natural instinct is to chase you. So if you ever have a close encounter with a bear, the most important thing is to not run. The general rule of thumb is, if it's a black bear, act big, make a lot of noise, get to slightly higher ground so you look even bigger, and try and scare the bear away. With brown bears and grizzly bears, it's different. You're supposed to play dead, you're supposed to act small, you're definitely not supposed to run, maybe slowly leave the area. But one thing with all bear encounters, every encounter is unique. You have to read the bear's behavior. There's a lot of rules, don't do this, do that, but every bear encounter is different, so there's no hard and fast rules. Never run from a bear, right? Well, what if you're three steps away from a house where you can get inside and the bear is 50 yards away? You can run and you can get to safety. So you're running from a bear, but it's not exactly the same thing. The three main reasons why people have problems with bears is because they cross a mother with their cubs. Number one, they come up on a carcass or some food source that the bear is protecting. Or three, they invade that bear's personal space accidentally. So they're hiking too quietly, they're not hiking in open areas, and they come in too close of a proximity, so the bear is just acting out of defense. So here's some of the material that I printed out that we're gonna be going through. Anchorage Daily News, nearly four times more bears were shot dead this year than in Anchorage in 2016. This is Defense of Life or Property Game Animal Kill Report. So if you kill a bear in Alaska, you have to fill out one of these reports if it's in self-defense or if you're protecting your property. <clears throat> And this is an interesting read to read through all the paperwork you have to do if you have to shoot a bear in self-defense. This is a report about the effectiveness of bear spray in Alaska. This report compiled all of the data from 1985 to 2006. Here's a report by the same author, the same lead author, Tom Smith where again, he compiled all the data, but this time it's the effective use of firearms for bear deterrence. This is what you should know about bear spray, how to use it. To reiterate a few points. First, most important when you're walking in bear country, it's important to make a lot of noise and to try and walk in open spaces. If you're doing that, 99% of the time, the bear's gonna run away and there's not gonna be an incident. Whenever you do have to deal with a bear that has undesirable bear behavior or aggressive bear behavior, that's where having a firearm or having a can of bear spray comes into play. To review the statistics, for long rifles such as shotguns and rifles, they're effective at stopping aggressive bear behavior 76% of the time. Pistols, 84% of the time. Bear spray is 92% effective at stopping undesirable bear behavior. But undesirable bear behavior is different than aggressive bear behavior. So in my opinion, I would say that firearms probably are more effective at stopping a bear that's attacking you, even though the statistics show that bear spray is more effective. So whenever you're in the woods, I would say the best option is to carry both. Carry bear spray and carry a firearm, make a lot of noise, and you won't be one of the three people every year that get killed by a bear. What does Pooh Bear call his girlfriend? Honey. What do you want? Hey. This is a one and a half year old grizzly bear. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. Also, leave a comment. Tell us about a close bear encounter that you had. Thanks for watching, guys. Coming through, bears. Coming through.
Coming through, bear. Coming through. All right, we're in a Hollywood movie. Oh, there's a big bear coming. What do I got to do? Oh, yeah, I got to chamber around. I always forget to do that. There it is. Bear Mountain. A lot of bears. Wow. Crazy guy. Driving on the wrong side of the road. 